welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. My name is Deanna. I'm working on a latch project right now. This will be our, the first commercial latch kit that I do. It's for August. It's for the end of summer. The theme is Cape Cod. I want to show you what I'm working on, how I'm working it, how I'm doing it as I go along in case there's a lot of pre-orders for this kit already. In case you are getting this kit and you want to see how to go about it, this is a very different kind of latch. This is a latch I'm calling very self-indulgently champagne latch because it's not your average acrylic latch set there is a huge mix and array and selection of yarns these are just the bushes um, that i've got out here but i'm mixing what are no normally called fancy fibers or novelty fibers with acrylic yarns wool yarns uh, hand dyed yarns that i use and, and make um so there's a big mix here but i want to show you what i'm doing because latch is not overly tricky in and of itself um, but I'm tackling this particular pattern in a very specific way. So I want to walk through it with you. I'll probably make a few videos walking through this with you. I want to first show you the design. So this is, I have it under, um, this, uh, piece of plastic, just like I took out of a frame. It's like a fake glass thing, you know, from a frame at the charity store. And I just drew the design, uh, which is like a little inlet, like a little bay of water. And then three bushes in front, which I'm thinking are like rhododendron or um, uh, Rosa Rugosa, something like that, with these crazy bright, bright, bright pink colors. And a bar of sand here that leads to a fairly close by line of sort of brackish trees and bushes that'll be uh, browns and mixed colors. And in the distance, on the other side of the water, another row of trees, again, brackish and uh, darker and just in silhouette. And then I've got a cloud here, and I've got a cloud at the top for balance and a, a strip of sky. So I'm doing it in these colors for the moment. This is what I settled on for the moment. I've only worked one side of it right here. Let me bring you right in close. So I've got on the top, I'll walk you through, through all of these and splice the video together, but I've got my um, white with like crazy uh, sky color and then I've got my blues. I've got a dark blue sky. And this is going to be the beginning of my row of brackish. This is an abstract landscape, right? And the way that I frame it is going to really pop it as well. But I'm using these longer fibers. I'm doing latch because I want this to read more like a tapestry than a hooked rug. Because you know I normally hook and punch. Um, I want this to have more height, more depth, more um, interest, more uh, painterly qualities to it than I can often get with just, I don't want to say just hooking, because we all know it's more than just hooking. So I've got the horizon back here, and then this is going to be my bar of water. And I'll show you more of what I used here, but I'm just going to for now show you how I'm working the bushes and the sand. I'm going to start doing sand. I just want to show you when you're working on this, if you do this kit, this is my color for here, and I've mixed it with this color that I hand dyed that's real thick. So I'm putting like one, one and one on each um, latch and running it through. And you can see on the back that I'm, I skipped a few because it got dense, you know, I want it dense, but I, I decide as I go how dense, you can see I catch most of them, not all of them, but most of them. If I wanted it more dense, I can just run through and add more into the places where there's holes. Do the technique that I always refer to as checking the dog for ticks and look for a bar of open canvas backing. So what I did with this first bush is the top is for me pretty done. I've got some pieces of this um, wool, the really bulky wool that I dyed the pink that I pull through and I'll pull through on the final piece too and it's sitting just the way I want it. Um, I pull through just, you know how when you see bushes, you get bits and pieces showing. So I like the idea, the very mohair effect of the fancy fur over it, but I kind of go through and I pull the pieces I like out to show, like they're just, just sticking out. It's just an aesthetic thing that is, is a choice. And with this yarn, it's held together by this black loop-de-loop -loop, um, cord of rayon. So I like the black. That's what's holding this mohair skein really together. But I don't love the black. And this is a personal choice. And this will hold the same for any color in this uh, kit or in any of the kits I put together. When I want to get rid of some of the black, I literally just pull the black strands up like this and 
cut them back. I'm basically pruning this bush, right? I mean, truly. And if you saw my video on the book reviewing the Walderboro rug book that is now uh, really very expensive, I hope uh, comes out in um, higher quantity so we can all get it and enjoy it. But when you trim back a Walderboro hooked rug, it's called uh, hoving, H-O-V-E. And that's basically what I'm doing. I am just hoving, pulling out all the black pieces that I feel are too black where they are. And I'm literally pruning this as I go. Now, the question will inevitably come up. Do I do that during, you know, while I, while I go, as I go, kind of pruning as I go, or do I do that at the end? That is not something for me to decide. That's something for you to decide. If it's driving you crazy, like it drives me crazy as I go along and I start to fool with it and pull at some and push others back and trim others back, that's just part of um, this latch project. I enjoy that part. This is a Cape Cod themed rug. I made myself a Cape Codder, cranberry and vodka. And I sat for an hour and just fooled with the top of this thing until I had a good ratio of dark, the black with the mohair. And I'll do more of that when I get to the end because every time I lean on it, I mat it a little bit more. So that'll all come up again. I'm recording a video in here. Don't come in here with no clothes on, okay? Oh, no, you got clothes on. There he goes. Here comes my Teddy. Where's my Teddy? Teddy, I'm recording a video, okay? So no video game talk. So that's going to be this bush here. So I have finished that bush there. This middle bush, um, I pulled out. I've already changed the colors on that. That's probably going to be this one's this one. This one is this one with some mixed colors behind. And in the middle, I'll probably get going to do a combination of something like this in the middle because I am thinking Rosa Ragosa. And if you know the case, you know you get a lot of these bright pink flowering bushes. So that's where I am with the foreground. I'm moving right now to the middle ground, which is the sandbar right, right here. This big sandbar is a big element of the design. And what the sandbar is going to do for this design, because it's an abstract, it's going to quiet it down. I've got, I wanted the dark, dark blue sky on top and I wanted the riot of pinks on the bottom. And that means I need a, something calming that's going to frame it. Now the blue is fairly calming, but the uh, browns and the sandy colors are gonna be even more calming. And what I've got here is I've got some of these cut. This is um, a brown that I dyed. I'm not immediately seeing it. I've got these guys that are going to be in your kit too. I'm sorry, I'm right out of the frame. These guys and these guys. And I've got a little bit of metallic, a few um, fancy fiber, just metallic, chainette kind of things. I've got these little guys. It's kind of a milky looking, creamy colored white. And... I've got some other things I'm going to throw in too. All this stuff will be in your kit too. I just want to remind you, if you didn't watch my other video on latch, how I cut. I have determined for myself that this is the length double that I want. This is the pile that I want because I can always trim it down. Um, I'm going to count on this pile too. I will give you a gauge or an idea of a gauge to cut. This is a piece of a Cheerios box and I've got it just right. And to cut my pieces fast, I'm literally winding them around my Cheerios box, bringing it back to the bottom. I'm only, I'm only doing a couple here. And then I come right over here. If you've done pom-poms, you know this technique. And then I've got a bunch ready to go. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that. I've got a white mohair. I'm gonna do a little bit of that with my white mohair because putting a little bit of mohair into the sand too is gonna make it look realistic in an abstract way, in a pointillist way, I think. Because if you think about walking on the beach, you know that all kinds of things catch your eye. Glittery things, pearly things, things with texture catch your eye. That's why beachcombers love walking along the beach. So I've got a nice little selection here of pieces that I've cut. Let me make sure I've got you in the frame. And as I attack each part of this project, I consider the colors and what I want to pop. So right here, I've got um, metallic dark copper. I've got my creamy yellowy um, thin wools. I've got some thin true whites, off whites. I've got some mohairy twist pinky sands and I've got some white mohair. So when I'm looking at this in terms of where I'm going to put what, I'm going to, I already started putting a few of the sands into this crease here. That's this here, right into that angle. And it's behind the bush, right? So not much is showing right now. For most of the latches, I'm putting, I'm just going to remind you how this works, I'm using two at a time. With the sand, I'm using two at a time. I'm putting them over, right? 
and this is my toggle here right that's the thing about latch that's different than hook is the toggle and I'm putting it right into I hope you can see this it's hard to see what you can see because I can't see you right now putting it in pushing it through pushing my I'll put I'll do this in a more open space pushing my two strands through and then pulling it and it comes right through let me show you over here two strands just in case you didn't watch the other video I'm just going to do it way off to the side I took two strands this time and I'm going to open my toggle I wrap it first I find it easier I just I find it easier so I choose uh, one of the horizontal bars of canvas backing have my two strands open the toggle wrap around the edge oops sorry totally screwed that up push through the canvas wrap around the toggle pull through let's do that again because that was a pig's breakfast what I just showed you so I'm wrapping two around the neck coming to the canvas pushing it through Whew, it's hot in here wrapping it around the edge of the toggle I'll do more of this later slower and pulling it through so I have different choices as I go along when I'm over here because I'm thinking of this as water I might take just one of these guys and then maybe one of the cream and one of the white mohair because I'm thinking about the froth you know when the waves come and go um, I'm thinking about the way that that little bit of white froth happens at the shoreline and since this you know this is the bay there might be a little bit of froth there might be a little agitation in the water so I'm combining as I go and I'm choosing as I go what colors I want to use you know this time I took one white mohair one white and one cream I'm gonna put them all together over the neck and I'm going to pull that through right under the waterline because I think if I right under the waterline just introduce a little rim a little border of white it will look sweet you know it will look like proper water and then as I go further down the body behind the pink bushes and the rogers uh, rosaria gosa and the um, rhododendron and all that um, you know it might be darker and shadier in these corners so when I go into these corners I'm going to maybe put in my darker one, still my sandy, my sandy batch, but my darker one with my copper, one strand of copper. Um, you can do a couple strands, two strands, three strands. You don't have to do one strand or two strands each time. That's the great thing about latch. You know, it's so, it becomes so dense. It becomes a sculpture and you're able to decide which pieces I want to put in which place. I want to add a darker little element here behind the bush so it looks like there's shadiness behind the bush. So I'm going to add one of my darkest coppers every time I come here, right behind the bush, just in that part. But then when I go back up toward the water, I'm going to be putting in the whites again because I feel like that makes more sense. Now, you don't have to be literal with latch or hook or anything. The joy of folk art is to not be literal. This isn't super literal, obviously. This is very colorful. This is almost like Scottish heather on Cape Cod. But I like it, and I like these colors. And I've um, been experimenting, you know, with the different skeins and with the levels of color, the levels as in ridges, like the, the sand, the pink to the sand to the blue. By the way, when it gets stuck, just pull it through. Don't um, force it and rip the whole thing open. Just put it through with your finger. And see that mohair was giving some resistance, but I can trim that later if I want to. I don't think I want to, but if I did, I would trim that later. You can see with the blue, I also um, introduced, and you're gonna have this in your kit too. I have a blue that is not immediately in sight. Here it is. Um, it's different than my regular blue. It has a little bit of brown in it. So when I did my water, same principle that applies to the sand, and choosing white on this part and choosing a little bit darker on this part for the um, under the tree line where the dark trees are going to be the water I made I put in a few pieces that have the darker brown just under that is kind of a reflection these are all things that you can do for fun you figure it out as you go along even more so I think with latch than oh, this camera uh, with latch then with hooking you figure it out as you go along and you've got you're gonna have lots of choices in these latch kits I'm gonna give you everything by number I was gonna paint the canvas but I don't painting the canvas as you can see I started painting it myself doesn't give me a lot of information I'm looking at my outline and then I'm gonna give you a picture like this with baggies that correspond number one water number two sand and if if you got baggy number two, you're going to have a ton of the sand in the sand thing. And it will be up to you to paint with it onto the canvas. 
how do I want to apply these colors? What combination each time I hook through is going to is going to make me happy aesthetically with what I've done? Because these are the choices and this is where they go. Easy as that. It's really something a, a kid can do. And that's why kids do do latch. But this is taking latch, I think, to the next level, giving it this kind of height and depth and interest and using these fancy fibers as opposed to just crappy acrylic. I think gives it a huge amount of punch and possibility. I have such a vision for how I'm going to frame this too. I'm so excited to show you, but I've got to finish it first. Anyway, this is just the beginning of this last video. I will add on to it later as I get further into the sky and the sand. Um, super relaxing, super, uh, what's the word my kids always use? Satisfying, latching and playing with it and trimming it down. It's just relaxing and fun. Crazy time, crazy year, crazy days. This is just very good therapy. Um, in terms of how fast is this to do, I did this bush probably in uh, an hour to two hours. It's fast. So it looks like it's a lot of work. It looks like it's a lot of, you know, um, spaces to, to put something. You're only putting them on the horizontals. And it's really not. It goes a heck of a lot faster than hooking. You can see the back of the work here the white cloud, the blue, dark blue sky, the blue water, the line of trees has a lot of other colors in it, just as trees would at the end of summer before they pop for autumn. And then my first, the beginning of first bush and the beginning of my second bush. So there we go for now. We will be back shortly when I make some progress. Let's see if I screw it up or if I keep going strong. Fingers crossed. I am moving along here. I am just finishing up the bottom of the first rose bush here. I didn't realize that I hadn't done it and I can see I still have 19 spots in here. So I'm going to do that really quick. Just reminding you how I'm doing this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll start with that. You can actually tell each, each uh, revolution is one piece of yarn for latch. So with, with filling that in, I've been busy. Ooh, that just went in my coffee cup. Excellent. Um, with filling um, these bits in, I've been busy trimming too. You know, I'm just loving my trimming. I'm loving this middle one, the way it came out, because I can really control the... It's got all kinds of crazy eyelashy stuff. And these, are you familiar with these? They look like a little ladder with color on each step. Um, hard to see. I'll do some close-up photos. I'm afraid to fool with the camera because then it'll go nuts. But there's like four or five different kinds of um, yarn in this central bush. And it, it really went sort of electric. This little guy off on the side, I'm pushing him over to the corner like the breeze is blowing him that way. Um, this one is nicely matted at this point. I've been pulling a few pieces through, but I like the way it looks windswept. And I've still been whacking away at the black like a little gardener. I'm in here trimming back the parts I don't like and uh, boosting the other parts. And then I'm gonna be up here shortly. You can see here's the inlet where the in the picture, the sky meets the water at just this one point. So that's where I am with that. And then I've built up the sides with the color on both sides. So I'm just trimming here for this part in here. And I'm gonna trim the same amount of, roughly the same amount of my blingy one. So I'm doing that the same way, just holding it down. Make sure you begin and end on the same part. In other words, I started him down here. I'm holding his tail down with my thumb. Make sure you end at the bottom too, or else you're going to have one piece that's too long or too short. So that's all set. So now what I've been doing with the bottom, just to reinforce, is I'm typically putting one of my main pieces in with one of my colored pieces. Sometimes I fold it over like this because um, I know it'll latch right through. And another tip is with the harder fi with the harder fibers, this bush for me was the most tricky fiber to play with. The other's not quite as tricky, but you do get a hang of it pretty quickly. If you twist it, once you put it um, together, twist it and then put it over the neck of the hook and then pull through. So if you're ordering a latch, now pulling through is going to be difficult at times. And when it gives me a huge fight, you can pull it through and it won't rip your backing, your canvas backing. It won't. But it's easier to just pull it through with your finger because then you've got all the ends exposed and you can immediately see if you want to clip anybody back or if you want to pull anybody up. That's another 
element of it is when you see colors you like, like the bright, bright pink I like. So I pull that up and it always will give another in other little ways. And then those pieces are more featured. So I do that as I go too. I'm just making choices about what I want to see. And I'll do this again at the end when I'm framing it. I'll be able to look at it all again. Let me fold this one in half again and see which parts I think are not pink enough or not red enough. And you know, you can always do searching for an empty piece, searching for a tick on the dog, and try to find an empty, I have to stop saying that because it's so gross, um, find an empty little space, even next to another piece where you can add something at the end if you want to. So at the end, if you decide, oh, I love this bush and I don't want to undo it, although undoing it is pretty easy with latch hook, um, I don't want to undo it, but I wish there was more pink there. You can squeeze pink in, even if you put it on, on the same little bit, the same little bit of backing as another piece next to it, it's still gonna work. With latch, you can always fit an extra piece. And with latch, you, nobody is gonna know that you did that. Obviously, you can't do that with hooking, just start adding things on top of things because it changes the directional flow and it changes the heights of things. But with latch, as you can see, ooh, there's a pink piece I'm gonna pull through. Um, you can really get in there and fool with it and customize it and make it just yours. Now with the same materials, I bet some other person is going to say, nope, I like more black in there. It's more dramatic. It's more theatrical. I'm going to go for more black and leave the black and push the pinks aside. So everybody's going to do something different with the same materials. And um, that's, that's a positive. That's good. You should. See, just what you like. And that's one of the benefits of doing everything at the end. I wish I had the self-control to do that. So you can see that this particular bush with these mixed fibers gives me a harder time. It's also very dense. It won't give you this hard of a time on your first ones because it's not next to anything that's giving it any resistance. But again, just pull it through with your finger. And for me, I trim. I trim already if I want to. Um, and I'm just going to keep going with these two last little piles to the bottom of this bush. Again, one more time, when you're doing this, arrange whatever you're putting on your hook, however you want, and then the action is you're putting it on the neck of the hook. You're, this is the toggle. You're pushing it through the hole until it goes through. When it goes through, the toggle will go to the other side, and then you are going to be putting your stuff into the mouth of the toggle like that and pulling it through. And it pulls through cleanly unless it's stacked as tightly as mine is and you've got a lot going on. I might have actually overpacked by putting two and three on the same uh, thingy. But in the end, I am stronger than um, the yarn. And if I mean to pull it through, I certainly will pull it through. So you get what you get in, in the end. It, again, it does not take, um, it does not take super long because you're working with such thick fibers and it's not a huge piece. So as labor intensive as this may look, I might leave that actually, that might be something for later. I'll trim it a little bit. Um, as labor intensive as this looks, this goes insanely fast. You're gonna get like a whole bush, or if you're starting with this guy, you're gonna get this guy done in a real short time and then have a hard time going to sleep because you can feel like you can just finish it in one sitting, which you probably can't finish it in one sitting, but um, you can get pretty close. So I'm gonna put you on hold while I put in these last pieces and then we're gonna move to the sky to finish this thing. So I'm going strong on this. Sorry, I didn't think it was recording. Um, I just finished this little corner here. I'm real happy um, with this. And at the front, I put just my, the last, the last little row, I just put this. It's just an aesthetic thing that I chose. I like the way it looked with a few close-ups of this pink sticking up like this. Now, one of the tips I want to give you that is, I think, fairly important is that when you think about the fibers that I'm using immediately here, some of them are 100% wool, like this bulky, um, um, I don't think I used any worsted, so they're all going to be nice, thick, heavy wools, 100% wool. But then it's a lot of stuff like this that is obviously synthetic. And the synthetics will stretch, right? They've got acrylic or they've got other um, man-made materials in there that have give. So it is a good idea to have your card for cutting 
and a second card. Actually, it's in reverse. Have your card, which is your full-size card. Now, this, again, is a Cheerios box, and I'll, I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to give you a gauge for it. I might just give you a piece of cardboard that's not a Cheerios box. But the thing is, if you cut your gauge or if you have a gauge that is your cutting gauge, you do all your strands that big, just think about when you cut the synthetics that have a lot of stretch and variation think about cutting a second cardboard box that's just a strip that's a little bit shorter because every time you pull those synthetics through they will stretch a little and they become longer now here in this middle bush I wanted that right I've got I'm gonna be fooling with this probably for days because every time I touch it I see something else I want to pull through or trim down but um, it is a lot of fun to play with but yeah when you pull those through you can decide at the beginning or later whether you want to have them long and wild like this for this bush i did for this bush i wanted the mohair to be like that for all of it you might not want you might want to again hove all different parts of it so that's up to you but not a bad idea to cut a second piece that's just like you know um, a half inch smaller narrower than your first piece for pieces that appear to be stretching more as you cut them so now i'm moving back to my sky back to the sky and my sky uh, materials for the most part are these two um, i'm thinking about putting this one in but i don't want it to look too much like water so i think for the moment i'm going to stay with these two and then i've got my clouds in the sky small as they are are going to be these four so i'm going to start at the inlet here to do my final piece and i'm going to start cutting away and i'm going to actually use my shorter one this time even though this is a wool um, I want the I want the ground, the earth, the the tree line to stand out more than the sky. The sky I don't want to be overwhelming. A big hairy sky would be frightening in any world, even the abstract latch hook world. So I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter, and then I'm going to cut the blues the same size. I I already know that they stretch a little bit because they're mohair. Um, I'm going to cut these the same size, and then I'm going to start working this little area here up to my cloud line. This is my cloud here. Of course, you're gonna have the picture if you're doing this. So I'm gonna fill this in real quick. I've got a cloud here. That's gonna be a great contrast to the dark skyline, the tree line, and then a cloud here for balance. And I'll be right back to you. So I'm working on my sky here. And as you can see, I'm coming around. I've got the cloud in place here. So I'm working right to the cloud line. Now I forgot that I had this blue that I dyed. I have tons of it. Um, it's super color variation in there. I do a lot of um, colored dumps. That doesn't sound really great, but on top of the color in the casserole dish, so I get this great color variation. So I've got this blue with a lot of variation, and I'm putting the blue around the edge of the cloud to make the cloud stand out. Cloud doesn't need much to stand out because it's in such light colors, white and off-whites and um, nice mixes that are super light, but I'm still really liking putting the darker blue and I do one strand of these because these are these are thick these are bulky um, they're perfect for latch they're nice and fat they're uh, real thick they're perfect for hooking too but um, I love dyeing these skeins that are this heavy and I'm just going around the cloud line with this latching a little bit of darker blue so I just wanted you to know if you have this kit when you look at your pack you're not only going to see this pretty cornflower blue and then the blue with all the dit dots of other uh, colors in it, mostly oranges, yellow, and green, kind of summer into autumn colors, I hope. Um, oops, that one snuck in there. See, that can happen. That's all right. We can redo that. One tiny casualty, one dit dot. But if you look into your kit and you see that um, you have this blue in here, I just wanted to let you know that what I did with the blue was just work... Oop, there goes a latch right around the edge of the cloud but you can do it you know you can go onto the horizon if you'd rather do that with a darker color you see this is where the sky meets the land right here I'm loving this I'll be right back to you I'm almost there now I'm onto this bit of cloud now so what I'm showing you here is what you can expect to find if you have this particular set these are the cloud colors I've got the mohair which is like a snowy white the squiggly stuff which is um, each piece is like, it, it, if you're getting it by the length, I just cut one piece for each latch, just do it by hand. And then the eyelash, soft, soft, soft pink, 
and then the worsted kind of grayish white. So I'm gonna start doing the cloud line. I'm gonna finish this cloud line here. And then when I get here, if I'm gonna lift up to show you the design, but there's a cloud sitting against these trees and then the sky continues up here. I always wanna work from one direction to the next. So right now I'm working from the bottom up because I've already got the tree line in. So before I continue the sky, I'm gonna to wanna to add this cloud and I'm gonna to wanna to finish this cloud and then I've got this tiny little strip of blue and that's gonna be the end of it. Be right back. So I just wanna show you this squiggle yarn. This is gonna be probably in many of my sets. Uh, it's really fun to play with and it looks like this. So if you get lengths of this, I just wanna show you how to cut it because it's a little bit different. I don't cut it in the middle of the squiggles. I just cut it, if you can see there's a definite um, pattern here. I cut it in between each squiggle. So one, one, you see what I'm doing? So I'm getting one squiggle with each cut, just so you know. I hope that was on camera. That might have been very stupid. I've got one squiggle with each cut, so I'm cutting it in between each of the little squiggles. Now here I am on the home stretch, and I've got my cloud in here, this blue definition, dark blue, and then the light cloud, and I stopped here. I'm going to add a couple more blues. Let me do that right now. Let me add a couple blues right here. I like the blue up near the skyline. Again, a lot of this, you're going to be color coded if you're getting this kit. A lot of this is still up for grabs. You play as you go, you figure it out, and you do it the way that you like it. You don't have to do it according to what I have done. Um, I like to put the dark against the very light, but you might to like do more sort of watercolor ombre uh, transitions. It'll be up to you. As you go along, take a step back from it and say, do I like the way that this is looking? Does it look too stark, the contrast? And if you're thinking, oh, this is just too much for me, I, I, I'm never gonna be able to figure this out. I know that you will be able to figure this out because I already know if you're watching this that you're a creative person and you are a curious person and you are not a person who is going to be defeated by one inch pieces of yarn. I already know that. So um, just assume that this is gonna go great because it will go great. I'm starting in the little corner here. I'm getting my cl this cloud in before I put the last strip of blue. This is my cloud here where my finger is. And I do a different thing each time. I've got two of the little wools and I've got one mohair here. And I do it differently each time. And as I go along, I think to myself, oh, it looks very mohair right there. It's getting very hairy and furry. And if that's the case, then I say, all right, for the next few little blocks, I'm not gonna do the mohair. Or if it's getting too eyelashy, I'm gonna do two eyelashes together here. Works actually works remarkably well, uh, eyelashing with this, but only if it's on the hook. <laughs> um, yeah, see as you go along, if you feel it's getting too eyelashy, then back off on the eyelash and put some more wool or whatever. You can just feel it as you go. You're always with my kids gonna have enough uh, supplies. And then as you go or at the end, clip it down. Just know you don't have to end up with a layer of shag that you feel is too much. I like to put two mohair together too. I don't know if mohair is plural. Um, I've never heard anybody say mohairs, but it could be perfectly right. I love the way they come up and I love the way that they felt themselves immediately to everything around them because it creates such uh, fusion and harmony. It's one of my favorite words, harmony. I've used a lot of words in this video, dump, not one of my favorites, but Harmony, one of my favorites. Ticks, not one of my favorites. So I'm gonna keep going like this along here, doing different sort of twists and turns as I go, using different combinations of fibers as I go until I get to the end and have finished my cloud. And then I will truly be on the home stretch and I'll be looking to do the rest of the sky. Figures on that one, it would give me a hard time, right? pull him right up like that and, and hove him right down. So I will come along here with my cloud and then I will meet you back for the grand finale. Well, I am on the home stretch now. I have got my little cloud in and I'm gonna um, sit with you while we do the rest of this little bit. It's a very small little bit so then we can look at it all together as um, a unified picture now. Um, I'm just hoving the top of my sky. I've got my sky and lots of mohair there. And I've got my three colors of blue. This will be your sky too, the sort of cornflower soft mohair blend. And then the wool that I dyed that's uh, several colors of blue all together. And then the mohair with this little beaded bit in it that I really like. And that hooks really well too. So again, 
I, I don't necessarily work from top to bottom. I worked in layers here because there's like shelves of color happening. But at this point, the body of the work is over there. So I want to work here. I want to clear this area and work um, up to down. I don't want to keep going over things with my hand because every time you rest your hand, you're felting a little bit. You Maybe you want to do that in certain places. Actually, on the whole thing, I want to do that. But if you don't want to do that, then be sure not to keep leaning over it and working parts like this because you will felt wool that way. The parts that are wool, you will felt them. So, and mohair. So I'm in here now at my skyline and I'm gonna bring the dark blues back in. Make sure that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna run along with you for a little while so you can see how fast this goes. With the thicker pieces, I usually just latch the single, but then I make decisions as we've said before, as I go along, uh, matching things up, putting things together and doing double strands quite a bit of the time too. I make a lot of determinations just in the split second that my hand grabs for something. So this is, uh, for me, this is a Cape Cod scene. All these, um, what they call that West, shelves of color, shelves, ridges, layers. Um, it's, it's, it to me looks like this place on Cape Cod in Eastham called Fort Hill where we hike a lot. And um, it's just beautiful. It's the kind of a place where you turn a corner and there's like a little break in the crazy wild, wild, wild bushes, colorful flowering bushes. There'll be a break and all of a sudden you see the bay and a little bit of blue out there and the distant piece of land. And there's always one house out, you know, on the land. And you think, God, I wonder who lives in that house. Who got that lucky that they live in that house? Somebody does. I'm not talking about the lighthouse either. I'm talking about the beautiful big houses out there. But I love that place. And um, that used to be my dad's favorite place to hike. And um, so that's always been real special for us and our family going there and doing that. We we're actually supposed to put his ashes out there years ago when he passed away and we still haven't done it. But it's a hard thing to do. It was like that summer that he got sick. We so hoped that one more time he could go to the Cape and come to this place, Fort Hill, and just take one more walk. But it's just not the way that it went. So I don't want to make myself cry either. But it's nice to have a special place, you know, that you want to put into a hook drug or a latch drug. And if you saw my last uh, video on latching, you saw me painting the canvas for the pumpkin rug. And you know that it is well within your reach and means and capability to do that. If you have a special place that you would like to do, like as an abstract landscape like this, um, you can just start for your place. Think of what it looks like. Draw a picture like I drew this picture and start working with color. Pull out all your best colors and favorite colors, even if they're not realistic colors, the colors you like best and start thinking about how to make that place happen. Latch is a good way to do this kind of abstract work. Um, you're going to end up with a piece with a lot of height and color and interest and depth that's lush and interesting to look at. Um, looks different every time I look at it. That's why I can't stop playing with it. But it is well within your capabilities, I know, to do something similar. If you don't like this design and you'd rather do something that is more dear to your family or a special memory, very, very easy to work landscapes this way. So I'm just coming in randomly every time with that time I did two of the thickies. I usually don't do that, but I'm putting in colors as I go and I'm coming to the end of the canvas and then I'm gonna turn it around and we can look at it and it will be abstract and you'll know for sure that I will be fooling with it when I have time again for quite a while, pulling out little pieces that I like and trimming pieces that I realize I suddenly hate. And um, and then I'm hoping later this afternoon, after I bring Joss back from riding, I'm hoping I have time to make a frame for this because I have a great, great idea for how to frame a latch piece that will give it extra interest um, and still keep it very folky and simple. So I wanna show that to you hopefully today. That will be a separate video just in case not everybody's interested in uh, framing their piece and just interested in the latch part. But as you can tell, this is an organic thing. It just goes as you go. And um, that one didn't get snipped. And it's a fast thing to work. And I showed the motion really close up of the latching in the last 
video, but you mean you can easily do this in a couple of days. And if you don't have the constant distraction of children who need things, um, then probably even sooner, you could have some sanity and some time and space to, to get this done rather quickly. And again, if you spend each knot agonizing about which colors to put together, you're missing the point of doing latch. The whole point is that it's it's wild and free, isn't it? It's wild and free. It's got to be. That's If, if it's not wild and free, you might as well do something else. Um, you don't want to overthink it. And you can always, always correct it. Nothing is easier than correcting something on latch when you don't like the way the colors are working out or whatever. You just literally turn it over and pull the knot out butt first and it just comes flying out. It's it's not like knitting. It's not like hooking. Um, it just, you take one piece out or two pieces out or 20 pieces out and it's always a bummer to undo, but it's not the end of the world and it's not going to be a huge time pig for you. So this really, really flies at this point. I'm not going to keep you to the absolute end. I'm going to turn you off for one minute while I finish this before I do any more crazy talk and I will show you the finished product. There we go. I am done. I am done. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wait a minute. I just found one more. I am the kind of a person who finds one on the floor and needs to hook it in. Might as well hook one more in, right? Why not? There's no more space, but I'm just going to add it here and then we are truly done. And I'm really happy with the way this looks. This is not, this is an abstract. I don't usually do this. So this is a little bit out of my comfort zone to begin with, but I love the colors that I have here. Is this worth it? I'm asking myself. There we go. I love the colors that I ended up with and see if I can show you side by side um, the drawing, the, the bay, the little inlet of sand, the various bushes, the sand comes down a little bit down here and then the water comes here and there's a break in the trees here and here and then the sky with the two clouds. So here's the little break in the trees. That's some um, landscape here, the tree line, tree line, cloud, cloud. And I will be spending quite a bit of time, I'm pretty sure, uh, trimming and stuff as I go and fluffing back out because I was leaning. But at the end of the day, my point here is that latch does not have to be boring. Um, this reminds me of the word painterly, which I really, I really don't like that word because it sounds so pretentious. But it's what it reminds me of, and I don't know what other better word to use. Let's think of a better word. Come up with a better word and leave a comment for me. But it's this is the kind of thing that you can do that can be customized to you, to your um, family, to your whatever taste colors. You could even pick the colors from the colors I give you and pick the ones you like better um, to use more of and in which place. But even with something as you know simple as latch, people always... Um, talk about latch like it is absolutely the low man on the totem pole and because it's easy in a lot of ways it is but at the same time um, I'm trying to make the point and I hope I'm making the point with these videos and with the kits I'm putting out that it can be more and it can be um, colorful painterly uh, more interesting and exciting it's got a lot of height this is what the back looks like oh look I had some leftovers but I'm not going to do it I'm not going to do it I'm I'm done. Um, you can see I've done almost every stitch. It's definitely dense enough and I just love it. I hope you like it too. So sorry about the not showering again. It is crazy days here and I got to get ready to take the little one out but I will be back later with a how-to frame something with this kind of height and texture video. Um, get going on your latch hook. See what you think. Give it a shot. It's a lot of fun and it's different. Just make sure your back is getting support when you do it. It's, it's something you have to really sit at a table for. It's not a lap thing. Anyway, have fun. Enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions about this kit. It'll be out shortly. Um, I'm trying to price it. I'm trying to figure out how much yarn I used, but it's not going to be a crazy price. None of my stuff is a crazy price. I'm just not... Um, I'm not a famous person, so I can't possibly ask a crazy price, but I will put these out for sale soon. And um, from Ribbon Candy Hooking, have a great day. Stay cool and see you soon.